Alrighty, good evening everybody. It's time for 2.2! In the next episode of the Panacone Festival. New Saga. Launch. Whatever. Germany Festival has entered its countdown phase. Accompanied by Clocky's TikToks, after 12 system hours, this grand celebration will commence with much fanfare. I already told you! We can talk things out! I'm sorry, Fluffy. I really have something urgent to attend to, so I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. You have crosshairs in your eyes. State your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill, and I'm a Galaxy Ranger. A Galaxy Ranger? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well. That's the price you pay for being off-grid for too long. The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? <laughs> it probably is. Pardon my frankness, but there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status. And none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. Oh, this is hilarious. The tale that this bunch of fools spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by a Dr. Primitive and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. Of course, I know you won't believe me. Which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. See the bullets in this gun? Nine millimeter. An eternal classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. That's just the way it goes, so you all have to first prove yourselves, eh? Huh? Uh, where are you going? Hmm. Recognize this? <laughs> it's a model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys? Hmm, model fudger? <laughs> I can't swear. This, is this game is in rated M. This to the Express by the Xianzhou Lofu's general, Jing Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Xianzhou Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. And across these sprawling stars, a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of cloud knights. Now, I reckon that'd be one fudging sight to behold. <laughs> he really wants to swear, but he doesn't want to drive up the now rating. It's your turn. <laughs> Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. But. I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is easy as pie. All right then, feel free to toss any questions my way. Let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, still ain't too late to show me the door. And why would I play along? If I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> All right then. Tell me, 
What kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> oh, my friend. This question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with. Everyone's on their own fated path along the hunt, with their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values. This reply does not instill trust. It only makes your predicament more precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? Hmm. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinnacone for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the Nameless's identity. Uh, the entire cosmos knows your guests of the family. Uh, aren't the Galaxy Rangers also esteemed guests? Well, you've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. The son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's on Pentacone right now. I really like how this guy's really restraining himself from not swearing. Keeper. She's the same as all mimetic organisms, uh, appearing one moment and gone the next. Uh, she scares the fudge out of me. Still, she gave me some vital info. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron. And according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. That's impossible. <laughs> That's what I said. Ah, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance. And that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? Then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which, for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. Its appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and Galaxy Rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. To reckon that nihility emanators don't exist, well, maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. <sighs> so, do you understand now? Your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. If you don't want to believe me, you'd best send a message to them. But I'd advise you to move fast. We don't know what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron... 
Who knows what she intends to do? Hmm. So Boot Hill enters the scene and maybe Daddy Boy is coming down with us? I don't, I don't intend know. to do anything. That's not up to you. Did you know? People who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. And then they will unanimously raise their heads to gaze at the sky. Be it reality or dream, Staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Since the day that the golden hour was completed, it's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. But now this night sky has been mercilessly severed, died, with the mist of nihility. And this whole event happened within the course of a single slash of a blade. A single slash of a blade isn't really accurate. It was actually two blades, just that the second one was faster. That's not the point. Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake of Pentacle and the peace. The planet of festivities has no place for you. A puppet of nihility. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to tread the illuminated stage. Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Penacone's dream master. Just another reason that you can't stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is the real me. We are one. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths, spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven in my stead. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. I am glad that you're an understanding one. Alas, I'm not asking. If you think you can. Are you threatening me? Hmm. <laughs> I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, why can't I? The result has invariably been that they can't. You are confident, but be reminded, the family is forgiving, 
but to not weak. The chords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply, when the blade is unsheathed for even a hair's breadth, you will never be able to escape the eternal centurion's wrath in all of your lifetime. 137 individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once severed my wings, and those who immolated my body. And here I stand again, about to add another mark. To the time. And you will die. I mean, all of you will. <sighs> but that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Penicone are of different worlds. Those born on the far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Leave and never return. The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self-annihilator of nihility. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything. Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. Akira, a befitting name. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Penicone has already deviated from the Harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Hmm. A lot of riddles. Volumes a little soft, okay. Excuse me. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? That better? Hmm? Yeah, what about it? Oh, Miss Robin! Am I seeing things right? <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just those chips you normally see everywhere. The green ones? They fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance? B but I really... 
technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival, but it seems it's been leaked. Can you help me keep this secret? The reigning chips were supposed to be part of my act. Oh, I see. Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Thank you. As appreciation, I'd like to give you a token gift. Sparkle, what are you playing at? This button is... Press it at just the right moment in the celebration. There could be an unexpected treat in store for you. Sparkle, no. All right. It looks like there are other guests who are also confused. I'll have to excuse myself. Please, enjoy the dreamscape. We do a little terrorism. So many people talking about it. This commotion at the theme park definitely made waves. Oh, we're playing Ass Robin now? Okay. Can I drive it without a license? Okay. Well, if we're using uh, Robin, I believe. Well, I'm not pulling for her, but. Let me see. I think she's good with follow-up attackers, if I'm not wrong. In that case, uh... Just do this... And this... And, uh... this yeah it should be good for now if we end up having to get into any combat what are you playing at though sparkle they would protect the guests within the dreamscape but i witnessed a group of organic life forms making their way to the theme park and soon after a rip tore through the sky, and black rain started leaking out of the void. The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. It's true that an uninvited guest has unexpectedly entered the dreamscape. However, their target is not the ordinary guests, but the ambassadors of the IPC. The family will certainly ensure that the safety of the guests is of the highest importance. Miss Robin, I know the Bloodhound family has already sealed off the theme park and has control over the situation. But it won't resolve the problem. The family can try their best to protect their reputation. But as a guest, I don't wish to gamble with my life. But as you can see, sir, no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident. Perhaps the dreamscape is not as perfect as promised. But there's no place safer than dreams under the family's rule. I believe you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people what? would be able to walk Sorry, away Sorry, I bumped from the it? mic. Hmm. I could stay here, but keep in mind, guests come to Penacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a conflict between the family and the IPC, so let's not have any more unnecessary incidents. Of course. With the Charmony Festival about to commence, we will spare no effort in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies, the family has arranged this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. We do a little terrorism, I guess. Just a little bit. And you know what? Now that I think about it... This is funnier. <laughs> to be worried about. 
There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. Hey, are you a fool? You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Huh? I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I've just been transferred to the Bloodhound family, and, and I'm still not too used to working on the streets. I, I didn't realize it was you. I, I'm so sorry. Hey, don't sweat it. You guys have a tough job. I know how it is. How's the situation looking? Oh, we've sealed off the theme park. Most guests are used to bizarre phenomena in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. Rest assured, Miss Robin will intensify our patrols to ensure that no incidents occur. I trust you guys. But regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? It's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Is it true that the IPC's ambassadors came with ill intent? And that Galaxy Ranger who easily cut through the sky? <sighs> Miss Robin, tell you the truth. Everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Panacone have already been causing unease for everyone. Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. The planet of festivities has indeed run into some trouble. The representative from the IPC... He's trying to regain ownership of Panacone and is prepared for a hostile takeover. Of course the family did not agree. The result of the failed negotiations... is as you see it now. Wonder. So this is the main reason why the IPC staff are banned from entering the dreamscape. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts, and I'll have something to show for it soon. However, given the situation, the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. Please be assured, Miss Robin, we take our orders seriously. We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. Thank you for your hard work. If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, please tell them on my behalf that protecting the dreamscape requires everyone's help. This is a small gift prepared by the Iris family for the guests. There's one for you too. Please. Open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. Spock, we're really out here giving up bombs. I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait, I am in a dream. If trouble comes knocking on our door, we're not afraid to go to war. Rest assured, the Dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound. I heard it says the fool always rings twice. Despite adventuring revealing the family's dark secrets of Pentecost to all the causes on life, the calling down to the Charmony Festival continues thanks to the operations. It's all thanks to you. As a temporary pride of the family, you move, every move from now will affect the very beating heart of the family. It's time to do what you must, Robin. Ah. Oh, so. Yeah, sorry I keep fiddling with my team comp, but. I think that's what I want to do. Miss Robin? That's the renowned cosmic superstar, Miss Robin! I didn't expect to meet a fan here. I'm honored. Welcome to Pentagoni, a world filled with wonderful dreams. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin! Sh shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Preparation is important, but the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family, 
It's only right for me to come forward and offer my apologies to everyone. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far-fetched. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? Everyone, please do not panic. I believe that the family will give everyone a satisfactory answer in due time. Even if you say so, Miss Robin, it's hard to believe. <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? It's never ending. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. Miss Robin? Still, I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Uh... <laughs> huh? What was I just doing? And, uh, who might you be, miss? Here, take this, little guest. This gift has been specially prepared for you by the family. She got tired. Make sure to take good care of it until the opening of the Charmony Festival. Then, when the show reaches its climax, press the button together with the others around you. <laughs> you never know. Something very exciting might happen. We do a little terrorism. Like I've been saying. In the meantime... We're back to where it all began. You entered the golden hour from this place. And it is also from here where you will enter the true Penacone. The true Penacone? It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. As you might have heard, I also go by another name. Stellaron Hunter Sam. Hmm. Are you alright? You lied to me! Are you Firefly Soul? <laughs> Are you alright? Sorry, I hope I haven't scared you. Are we seeing ghosts? <laughs> Uncle I don't Sam! Have any questions? Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? When I was caught by that meme? In that instant before it killed me? I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. So, following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations. Drawing everyone to the Dreams Hotel. I intended to call upon death before you arrived. To solve the riddle using more direct means. And then invite you to join. However, contrary to my wishes, I couldn't defy the script. And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. Okay, Elio shenanigans, let's just... I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria miasma exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. But after the momentary numbness subsided, I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. So yeah, she got no clip. She got no clip to the back rooms like adventuring. More got chaotic, it. more primal memory zone. Its name? Land of the Exiles. And so, then I returned to the hotel in the dreamscape, hoping to tell you of its existence. Yet I, I, I could not <laughs> Loki episode five. my not own wrong. identity. So, I could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield. And after... All my attempts proved futile. 
It wasn't until not long ago, when a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream, causing you all to fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape, that I was able to awaken you and your companions one by one. And, and that's it, that is all that's happened so far. Okay, <laughs> I completely understand. I'm completely confused. I know it's tough to believe all this without reservations. I just want to say, you are very close to the final answer. Just one more thing needs to be done. And then I can prove it to you. Panacone is really hard to understand, no. you know. Let's leave this place. Please close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. And remember, you must not open your eyes at all times. Three, two, one. Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived. Time to get shanked into the back rooms, I guess. After a piercing screech, a thick and ferocious surge of memoria crashes into your chest, churning and ravaging. Your consciousness becomes like scraps of paper caught in the world, will break them apart, dissolving and dispersing within the turbulent blah, 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 blah. Numeral voices resonated through the symphony of memoria like roaring thunder, and among them, one echo stood out with exceptional clarity. You know it came from the girl beside you, your heart's beating to the same rhythm, peaceful, and even more peaceful. Gay! <laughs> and during the quiet darkness, memories ripple into existence. Welcome to the back rooms. I never knew you could do this. Huh? <laughs> do you have a driver's license? I do. Blade in a suit? Surprising. Why? Because this is Chapella, the city of sins. <laughs> no, it's nothing. I'm just thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. <sighs> I'm not so sure about that. Slow down a bit. Infiltration is over. Feel free to activate Sam anytime you like. There's still some time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. Long silence ensued, neither of them brought up any topics, and they accustomed to the silence. Hmm. There was only too much later that a soft sigh once again broke the quiet in the car. Such a long tunnel. <sighs> Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Chapella Brotherhood. Also part of the script? It's in your script too. Sorry. I didn't notice. With all this talks about scripts and stuff, this is very low-key. Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. <sighs> I told you before. It's a bad habit. What about you then? Is this the moment you finally find them? Death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? Because I'm currently in a car with a sleep deprived driver. I just want to get there in one piece. <laughs> funny, funny. <sighs> this car has full self driving capabilities. Just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? <laughs> hey, don't take everything so seriously. Elio would always say there's only one type of destiny. The inescapable type. He can see the future, and we... Likewise, are aware of our previous... 
predetermined end. But before that moment arrives, we can still choose what we do. We all have this right, don't we? After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history. And the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you will receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. Or salvation. Glad to see you're safe and sound. What? Mr. Yang, you're here too? Close your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't it incredible? The monster that we have always known as Death is actually the guardian of the land of the exiles. It abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. It's a backroom entity. The question entity. that has been perplexing us, does death really exist in the dreamscape, appears to be a cognitive trap. It was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dreamflux Reef. Every emergence of that meme is related to the Watchmaker. Since Dreamflux Reef is where it brings its captives, it's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in this place. Mm. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. But from the whispers of the residents, they've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. It's that man again. Always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Though that does save us the trouble of looking for him. Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. Alrighty. The real dreamscape. The land of the exiles. Before we go, should we speak to everyone first? Dude, I love the uh, I love the environment in this area. So. Void. Yeah, this is some like cyber cyberpunkish. Well, not the train station, but like you know the rest of it. Take it personally, I guess. Elio only gave me one instruction. Allow the Astral Express to pursue the Grand Legacy. It means that the Watchmaker's legacy holds great significance to trailblazing. And to you. Elio's scripts used to revolve and expand around certain specific Stellarons. 
But with your appearance, this condition has apparently ceased to be appropriate. Perhaps he also saw the impossible in the future. Do you still remember that medical cabin I told you about? Well, that's Sam. It belongs to the Iron Cavalry of Glamoth's Firmament Frontline. A Firefly Type 4 Tactical Heavy Assault Mech. It's a Gundam. It is the cradle of my vitality. And the meaning of my birth. And for the longest time it was... How I should have looked to the rest of the world. Hmm. The time scale of Dreamflux Reef differs from reality. So we mustn't lower our guard. You're sensitive to Moria. A slight misstep. And you could get lost in this memory zone. I'm guessing that means like the whole talk about the entropy syndrome or whatever and her fading away was actually real. That means that stuff wasn't like a cover story that was all real. Just that, you know, she's uh, sustaining it by being a Gundam. Something like that. Like that that helps her. Uh, at least that's my guess. Something on your mind? Let's talk about it. No wonder Miss Acheron is so averse to drawing her blade. It's hard to imagine such terrifying power could reside in an ordinary sheath. If it weren't for the fact that Aventurine's power originated from the preservation, the entire dreamscape would have been affected. Don't feel burdened by this. Even without that Stellaron inside you, Aventurine would still have found other methods to accomplish his goal. Let's just believe in Miss Acheron. And given her prowess, I don't think we've got anything to worry about. During your investigation, he shared a vital piece of information. Mikhail, the former watchmaker who collaborated with the family to construct the Penacone we're familiar with today, had a falling out with the family for specific reasons. Hmm. But this is precisely where the problem lies. You were clearly investigating a murder, so then why, as a security officer, is he changing the subject to talk about his past with the watchmaker? And now, with Firefly mentioning his name again, it's hard not to be suspicious. Well, we know he is the imposter, sus sus among us. Before we found you, she'd already revealed her Stellaron Hunter identity and shared a lot of information. Who would have thought that the Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl? For her, this is a secret that she cannot allow others to know. That being the case, I think we can believe she's willing to cooperate. But she didn't reveal all her secrets. I just can't shake the feeling that her situation is different from that of the typical dreamer. And I hope that doesn't lead to any dangerous predicaments. I hope you've regained a little composure. We'll move out when you're ready. Alrighty. Advance down the narrow alley. Over here is Sir Trashback. He has bid farewell to the womb of this trash can to protect Miss Billboard. Ah, still never change. <gasps> this trash bag is mine! <laughs> Alright then, off we go. <laughs> Welcome to heaven. Dreams, true or false? <laughs> All are ephemeral! <laughs> Might as well drink more Soul Glad instead.
Like how you can just hear dripping water in the background. Oh, it's over here. Tip of the water drop. Water, the source of all life. Increase the solution. Something dry car and electric switch work. Stell and her. Oh, and her flight to fence. But yeah, look at look at this place though. All right. Underbelly of New York. Straight down this alley, and it'll lead to an elevator. It'll take us to the center of the land of the exiles. Just the couch. Just polish Oh, some compound transformation setting. It's a sofa you can sit on. <laughs> then don't mind if I do. You easily plop yourself on the sofa. Your troubles are fading away like smoke in an instant. Working chairs. Holy heck. Just a shame that nobody understands this map. Trash. Trash bin. Trash bin. Oh. Hi there, friend from a distant land. I hear the watchmaker's legacy is right here. Let's say we go treasure hunting. People in here are weird. Okay. What a huge clocky. Looks like the watchmaker also left his mark on Dreamflux Reef. Oh, that is mildly creepy. <laughs> There's something about the way that thing is lit. Oh, it's moving. It's <laughs> It's it's eyes are moving. Yeah. Getting some Bendy and the Ink Machine vibes from that. Or, you know. FNAF. FNAF. It's a common plot in long movies and video games. A statue like this will rise on a face you in glorious battle. <laughs> that, that's all you're gonna say? <laughs> Huge ass feet and everything. What is that noise? There's creepy things going on in here, nice. chat. You know what else this place reminds me of, actually? Like the way it's lit and everything. Tell me if, uh, tell me if this looks familiar to anybody else. Little nightmares. There is a distinct whiff of little nightmares in the air with all this.
Okay, heck of an intro. Oops. That was a heck of an intro. This fortress is pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. When I first saw it, I was in awe too. The sky here, it's like a reflection. Clocky is now giving me Miss Minutes vibes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Hmm. Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. But there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himako and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the Trade District. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. Sure. Let's reconnect later. Letting her go was the right decision. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust her. But first, there is someone I need to talk Misha? to. Misha? What are you Let's doing go. here? I'm sure you've already noticed him. Misha and Clocky, what are you all reading? How are you? He's right over there. Hmm. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful dream. And why does he share a similar name with Mikhail? We better check, just to be Misha, sure. Misha, Mikhail, etc., etc. Are we gonna fuck? This is perfect for me, and perfectly legal for me to stay in. Well, I can't say I am any less, uh. Of uh, my place. Yeah. I definitely have entered a few trash cans in my time. We can do more for an exploration later on, I guess. Let's see how you handle a stroke of genius like this. Yeah, we we can do more for an exploration later. Let's go see what's up with Misha. Oh, hang on, though. A wallflower. A black hole structure spawned from the lost memories, ravenously feasting on an already destitute world. To the void of any substance that seems to appearance of repetition collapse in the dream, what I read. That is pretty though. He's singing uh, if I can stop one heart from breaking. Yahaha! Ha! Guest from before. <laughs> we meet again, and a new 
new friend. Uh, uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. Uh, we met in a dream. Well, and who might this be? Well, it's you can see, Clocky. Tick tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high five! <laughs> Mr. Yang, you're still young at heart! Your um, memory zone mean? <laughs> no. Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. Why does he sound like Mackie Moose? He always sounded like Mackie Moose. So this is your home? Yep. After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. This Sleepy, can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes, but it's actually really well made. Death is how you commute? Care of it. That is silly. <laughs> Gallagher again. Based on the description, that meme is indisputably death. Nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from. <laughs> so the, the deaf thing that nooks you into the back room is actually just Not a train. A dream, surely, Sleepy's just a little aggressive and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone. <laughs> I see. That is that is the Has wackiest twist in this entire recently, story so say, far. In the last day or two. We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. Uh, we've, we've changed it from a murder case I to a missing see. person's case. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Ah, uh, yes. He yoinks, um, he yoinks Sunday Mr. here. Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for... Is it Miss Robin? Mm, just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. Yep, nobody's dead. It's Everyone just got no clips to the back rooms. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Uh, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh, I... I haven't. But please, rest assured, Dream Plux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream, but its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Plux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions. And then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. That means adventuring's here too, She's presumably. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon, so there should be enough time. All right then. We'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penaconi. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. Hmm. Uh, no idea. <laughs> but its connection to Gallagher is worth digging into. Regardless, we have to find him. Say, you mentioned before that you saw Clocky that only you could see, right? You also saw him, Mr. Yang. I can't shake off this strange feeling. <laughs> Am I really still so young at heart? Just take the compliment, Mr. Yang. Forget it. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Everyone, look! From here, you can see the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. A black hole? No. An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? 
Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? You know, this is actually a really pretty shot. Right? This is thumbnail material, honestly. It reminds me of uh, Spider-Verse, actually. Spider-Verse has, like, some shots that look like this for the... Mm. Uh, you know, the, the Collider, right? You know, the Collider and the New York stuff. Some of the stuff looks like that. Looks like an apocalypse shot? Yeah, kind of. Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in Memoria Dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. are finally done. In another ten system hours, the above dream will swallow the dream below. My hypothesis was correct. This place will cease to exist as the dream devours everything. Hmm? Who are you all and why haven't you left yet? This place is about to disappear. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Kami. A dreamscape surveyor specializing in memoria dynamics, and this is my life's work that I'm researching. See that huge gaping hole? It was just a narrow rift many years ago, but now it's grown into a giant hole. The surrounding memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. But the scary part is... According to my calculations, the flow rate of Memoria has recently changed, and it's faster than ever before. It's almost... almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side. By constantly improving upon Madame Rosalina's Memoria measurement method, I've finally obtained accurate results. After ten system hours, the Dreamflux Reef will cease to exist! Just like the melting of glaciers, everything will crumble and disintegrate. The dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one. Uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Kami isn't a bad person. She's just a bit lost in her own world. She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. <laughs> you don't say. There was a something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? We're very interested in Madame Rosalina's achievements. Uh, could you tell us a little more about them? Why, of course! She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics and the first person to apply Memoria Rate Measurement Methodology on interstellar travelers. Regrettably, due to the presence of the Garden of Recollection, ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature of Memoria. She departed this world without much fame, leaving only a few thin journals behind. I came to Petaconi to learn more about my idol, and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef, all because this is her final resting place. Prodigies always meet their demise prematurely. If only Madame Rosalina had more time, she would have discovered a way to reverse the flow of Memoria. I felt it. The source is in... Uh, the Golden Hour. There is a certain anomalous presence stirring the currents of the Memory Zone. I must uncover more concrete proof. I must convince everyone. Does the name Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? Hmm. That's right. It seems like she did a great deal of research and calculations in Dreamflux Reef before abruptly passing away. Miss Kami regularly mentions her. I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. <sighs> she could see the Pentaconi of today. It's people building homes in the memory zone. <laughs> I bet she'd be really happy. Perhaps. Our destination is the commercial district. That's where the largest crowds gather in Dreamflux Reef. We might be able to find the others there. Oh, hey. 
Let me go! Please, come to your senses! I'm begging you! Who are you talking to, March? <gasps> no, it sounds like Ready Player One. Ghost! There's a ghost! Don't come near me! Oh my. I'm human and so are you. Can you get a grip? Uh, Mr. Yang and Miss Trailblazer, I've been waiting for you. Quickly, come help! I bumped into a member of the family on the way here. He was so scared, and I just wanted to calm him down. But... Let me go! Let me go! I've only done good in my life! Why can't I rest in peace after death? Well, this is how it turned out. Oh, did he get yoinked? <laughs> now, you shall, now you shall pay respect to March 7, Ghost of Dream Flux Street. You scared him this badly? <laughs> You're a regular comedian. <laughs> he thinks he's dead. Although, when I first fell in, I also thought the same. Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. This is Dreamflux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat after me. <laughs> Always bullying March 7. Both Reef. options would have bullied her, so. You're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. Curiosity kills a papushi. Something, something, Inception. Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. All of them! Uh... You're not talking about the Memory Zone meme, are you? Uh, don't say that name! It's all your fault. They're coming! What? Oh, oh, okay. Still water the cliff. Time for a bug. <laughs> this is double speed. Yeah, this... This are is just the back room. This is just the back rooms. No need to panic. He passed out. His intense negative emotions <laughs> to nearby memory zone memes. I see. But why aren't the other people around here scared? Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. But we can't just leave this man here. Can we take him somewhere safe? We can ask Jesse for help. I've gotten to know many locals while waiting for you guys. Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying on the I guess the idea is this is real New York versus Disney World. <laughs> Gentrification. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom at Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? If you fall out of Disney World, Not you end really. up in Florida. It's becoming more frequent now. I guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. <laughs> Disney World is collapsing into this Florida. Had quite the shock. That's what's happening. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. Ah, Robin? A Halovian lady? Robin. That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. <laughs> no, I don't want to go to Brazil. <laughs> Then it means 
means Robin must be You're going to Florida. Too. Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himiko. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana, like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. Oh wait, no, this is this is colonialism. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Penacony. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place and the sweet dream. Hmm. Must be gathering information. Let's hurry up and get going. <laughs> so, so what we're getting out of this chat is that this is this is the VR chat metaverse, the original one, made by uh, made by the the regular people and the furries, and the one up top is uh, Meta's metaverse. If you catch my drift. of crypto talk to an advertising and NFT. Where we split up. She can't be too far away. It's true. So that's how it is. I never imagined we'd gather the remaining details here. Who the heck is that? <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase. Nika? What an unpredictable twist of fate. Himeko, here they are. What's of all these people dressed oh, similarly? Mika, Misha, Mikhail? Well, are they all just his descendants? Who's partly in charge of the land of the exiles? Micah, these are my companions. Micah, Micah, My it's Mikhail. It's pleasure to meet the nameless. Misha, all variants you of the same name. Know us? There's an NPC wearing I've the jacket. Keeping though. an eye on you since the day you arrived. NPC in model, Penacone. but wearing Misha's jacket. We would jacket. have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the Twelve Dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah, the Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. <laughs> do you want to go back so, to Disneyland, or do you want to try living in Florida? Hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Gotta watch out for the Florida, Florida hmm? alligators. Hmm? On that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. An important guest? Who could it be? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. Let's have a toast to Dreamscape. Yeah. So this is the There she is, boys. There she is. <laughs> Wonderfully, it's not often that I tried this. And <laughs> this is just the Bronx. <laughs> but I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, 
they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. Okay, I wasn't expecting... <laughs> I wasn't expecting autism to be mentioned by name in a game like Stario, but hey, what the hey. Cool. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. Here, here. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. Should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams, because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. It's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance caused quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? Ever since I returned to Penacony, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment. Perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it just takes some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of memoria as Donna. But now it seems... the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. I'm losing my voice. It's just one of the signs of the sweet dream's collapse. Mm. The sweet dream's collapse? That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. So it's real. While I was away from Penacony, the boundaries of the 12 dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. The land of the exiles, concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Penacony's past is buried. Ah. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable, but the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor... or traitors... abandoned their original principles and, using the name of harmony, exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities, trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. Mm. This is 
not the strong defending the weak, but rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an Emanator is involved. <sighs> I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role, and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Hmm. Meanwhile... Look here, brother! A little bird! Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So, how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. But... Where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? Then it won't have the freedom to fly. Right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention of the two best interpreters of the Great One? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. Oh, poor little thing. It doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do. But I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered, it can't sing. It didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds... They should be flying free in the sky. <sighs> That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scum? Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right, but if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really hard, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground, 
So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, you mean, birds aren't born to fly, but they find a way to do it through their determination, right? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself because... I... I want it to live, no matter what. Well said, kids. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. What might that be, my son? What if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky, only to see them crash to the ground and die? Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. <sighs> huh? <laughs> Need a hand? I'm still alive. Welcome to the back rooms. <laughs> yeah. Happy about Alternative that. Feet. Welcome to Florida. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. Just call me the bus boy. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Ah. Cooperate? Okay. What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacone. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is... the sense of justice inside of you. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. It's all coming together. That'd be great. 
Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. Alright, this is good, this is good. We're getting payoff. Every, uh, we're getting we're getting stuff that's coming this together. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and Tiernan. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us, Donna, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on this small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Penacone faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lampmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded, wiped out by the swarm. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Robin. You're alive! Huh. The atmosphere sure is livened up with all these people in here. I brought Gallagher here. It's time to face the truth. Hmm. Well, I did my job. I gathered everyone here. Gallagher will explain the rest to you. Take care. Need for words. You're safe, and that's all that matters. All right. I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters. I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. Are the you the one who sent the invitations? They know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dreamflux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and the one who sent out that invitation. Ah. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. Hmm. History fictionologist? So what? Everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family 
The Watchmaker and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions, and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? <laughs> How keen. Well, what should I say? I expected nothing less from the person here who is the most familiar with the Stellarons. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean of Earth to make an island. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. Ah, Disney World and is made of one. That's you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Azdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? Disney World shouldn't exist. It all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice, weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Penacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata, and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. I wonder what the family's Dormancy. endgame is then, though. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't follow They're just trying to make money off of Penacone? So this is the true meaning of the impossible. 
You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Peniconi to uncover the truth. That's what they mean by the Watchmaker's it's legacy. not just yeah. that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. That makes sense. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Panacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive. And even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans, and were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopher Wood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacony. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopher Wood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing, no matter who the traitor is or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. Or the paradise in our dreams. You know, Sparkle trying to commit the terrorism up there. For the paradise in our dreams. Suddenly, As doesn't seem like such a bad idea. Family, I'm responsible for ensuring Panacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the harmony, I'll fight alongside you. Does we'll she know the, the truth? Festival on hold and make sure the, they already said she she realized that like her harmony the voice wasn't working very well, so she she came here to investigate. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. Yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Miss Trailblazer? <laughs> Going up against the Remaster? Nah, I'd surrender. <laughs> nah, I'd win. Peace was never an option. <laughs> exactly. It's time for the crew to save the world once more. So much for our vacation. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Nah, I'd win. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with oh, the like your memes. And the DNA of the make soul. All the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start. 
and time is against us. We must hasten. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Huh? Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? <laughs> How powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Pentagoni, and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Hmm. Although, I can't quite put my finger on it. He did have that one I sus line. I have to make sure line. he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. He had the one sus line. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Huh. I knew it. As I suspected, this chip Aventurine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. Aventurine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If uh. negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. Ah, politics. The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Spoken like a true hero. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Lakework. If I'm not mistaken, we've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received a reply from the Astral Express, and I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Hmm. <laughs> ah, of course, reputation reason. Galactic Baseball of Supremacy! What? Uh, hey, you can't just make up titles like that. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pompa. Ah. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. So that's who you are all As this for time. The last nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, 
He told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future. Oh, no, it's not him. <laughs> he left behind a special gift, a true legacy. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblazers. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal it. Oh. Meet with the watchmaker. Oh yeah. What's the the one piece? Uh, back here again. The one piece is real. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. I've kept my promise. Brought the future trailblazers you've waited so long for. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train. But I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 2. Whoa. Fancy. Go ahead. His resting place lies in the garden up ahead. First and last nameless of Penacony. Mikhail Char Legworth, the watchmaker. Ah. This has been a pretty cool story, yeah. I like how it's all coming together. We are getting answers. Yeah, it's not something. Yeah, it's not uh, as like overly convoluted as it, as it could be. So, hey, that's good. Beneath the sea surface of memory zone, the garden closes to the full moon in the water. An elderly man rests in recline and enveloped in utter silence. The watchmaker, Mikhail Charles Legwork, gets passed into that endless time stream, and no sound could ever awaken him. Sure enough, the Watchmaker is the third nameless. Even I could guess that one. The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Even more mysterious than me. Well... Let's have a look. As the words cease, and make a nods ever so slightly in direction. Take a deep breath, take your mind, and turn your gaze towards the watchmaker. Press your hands against the dream bubble and thick viscous memorial converters on the stream. Chill travels from your fingertips, carrying with a myriad of vibrant and intertwined memories, as experience would suggest. It's time you see nothing at all. The approach was wrong, you think, holding your breath and closing your eyes. On knee on the ground, you press your forehead against the thin film, quicker than you are. There remains an abyss of darkness. No crimson sun, depending on snow cap mountains, no gentle dark, no twinkling stars, no echoes of sword clashing. Most of all, no traces of trailblaze. There is nothing, and nothing is there. Indubitably, this is but an empty dream bubble. Wait, what's going on? The Dragon Seriously? Scroll. Uh, there's nothing inside this. It's dream nothing. Bubble? It's okay, I didn't get it the first time either. How could a dream bubble be empty? No thoughts hit empty! Just as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. 
This empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. I'm sure Mikhail has left us the most precious thing of all. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker, don't you, Gallagher? Well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. I'll leave it to you guys, then. Hmm. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales store. It's for Mikhail, and for the future of Penacony. Welcome to the Reverie Hotel! Meanwhile... How may I help you? Meanwhile, with the Cowboy and Dunham. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. And we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought... Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? Uh, I'm... Pom Pom. <laughs> a new nameless who's also with the Astral Express. <laughs> <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. We responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the Express. So he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it... Possible to accommodate him as well. Oh, I see. Another one of the nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. Yeah, currently in Florida. What do you mean by unable to reach them? My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number, and we'll go check on them ourselves. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh... I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding forced awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. It seems so. Oh, fudge. Look, nothing personal, but if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? Uh, please calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please... Wait a moment while I contact him. Also uncontactable. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. Uh, 
I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the Express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. Just don't keep me waiting forever. Valhalla seems pretty worried about his companions. I should give him some space. Stressing out about it won't help anything. of the Bloodhound family, head of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? Hello. So, uh, there's something I wanted to ask about. I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. Do you think there's anything to be worried about? I've traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation, and I don't want my trip to be ruined. Um, what do you mean? Wait, you haven't heard? I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. <laughs> there is no war in Ba Sing Se. At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a relief to hear. She doesn't appear to be acting. So, it seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. here for the Charmony Festival too. Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about, but I heard it's a lot of fun. Well, back in my home world, Anaria, we have festivals like that all the time. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. Oh, come on! The Charmony Festival is a once in an Amber Era event! How can a birthday party compare? Well, you never know, right? Maybe on her world, birthdays only happen once in Amber Era. Anyway, let's forget about that. Have you heard about the uh, unsettling things happening in the dreamscape? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival! I've been looking forward to it! Relax. With a big event like this, there's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Don't worry. If anything does happen, the family will be on top of it. <sighs> oh, that's a relief. I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues out of these two. They're clueless. Hmm. Back already? Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder if sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. Neither the staff nor the guests seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape. And Wherever we go, all we see is people enjoying themselves. Definitely not a good sign. I agree. Another unusual thing is that the Oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape. However, I walked around the hotel but didn't meet a single member of the Oak family on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. If I remember correctly, 
The head of the Yoke family is that Sunday guy, right? We shouldn't linger here too long. Let's go back to the Express for now. Uh, not so fast. Have you ever robbed the IPC, bro? If you run away now, everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing. But let's stay put for now. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain outsiders, so they won't do anything reckless. See? The IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. I gave a backup plan to the memo keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the dreamscape, she'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality, a secret signal. That's right. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the memo keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill, if you have more backup plans in the future, I hope you'll let me know in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... Things can go awry, and that would leave all backup plans completely useless. How do we get into the VIP lounge? This is where my street smarts come into play. You're the lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. How may I? assist you. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. We wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Now, we've been waiting here forever without any food or water. What the fork, man? Is this how the family treats its guests? What Hill's PG swearing is uh, hilarious is to me. Is this your idea of street smarts? Starting an altercation? It's called standing up for your <laughs> What rights. the fork, man? I apologize for the inconvenience. Please wait while we try to contact Mr. Sunday. I'll arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there while you wait. Haha. Uh -huh. Acting like a Karen. See? Just like that. Just... Uh, just... Don't call yourself nameless next time. Wow! This bar is something else. Certainly worthy of the planet of festivities. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, I have an order for a bottle of his Donna's White Oak. Can you help us find it? Has Donna's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no way. Are you sure you're not mistaken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Or could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? What should we do now? Oh, no need to rush. Well, let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early and she hasn't come yet. Let's see what...
what kind of juice waltz you all have here. Huh. Well, give me a glass of Heenum Valley, 40 years. I'll have it neat. No ice. Well, that's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. Pom Pom's gonna be mad. <laughs> it's on the house, anyway. What can I get for you? Anything you recommend is fine. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboon juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. <laughs> Charge it all to the Astro Just Express budget. Minute. True. Ah, this flavor. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Oof! Really hits the spot. Truly the finest sherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel, Earth. Is that really something that humans enjoy? <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. Let's give the memo keeper another half system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, Let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities, but the public is unaware of it. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions, let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> If what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is a little complicated, to say the least. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about regarding Acheron. As you know, the faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous bolts in the cosmos to mess with. <laughs> Who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? It's like asking for a death wish. Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that uh, the Rainbow Set lets their luck's arrow do all the beating? Talking. Do all the talking. Well, you know what I mean. Even. Though the Galaxy Rangers have been out of sight for years, we've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. But that Acheron lady, she doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. On the contrary, she's highly logical and organized. She knows exactly when to hold back and when to strike without mercy. And do you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a Galaxy Ranger? I'm not entirely sure. But I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a Galaxy Ranger, or perhaps she's trying to lure us out for some reason. Which I can't figure out. Anyway, what worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual. Unless the invitations weren't sent by them. If that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival, despite the chaos. Maybe it's she pay the Harmony pull the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't and fudge. They even break their own rules. But eons don't. They stick to their determined path and never turn back. Even if they reach a dead end. 
You think she pays Will is behind all this? It may not necessarily be she pay. There's definitely some higher entity involved. I know it may sound pessimistic, but if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? No, we know it's, it's Stellar. It's simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh, so you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because they're absolutely right leader is gone exactly i believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right it's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities even with limited insight and judgment i don't know what you've been through but I agree that people must take responsibility for their choices. Because no one else can do it for them. That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter. And figure out her true intentions. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the Memo Keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. I promise. You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. Well, going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. By the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important looking guests? What's your plan? It's simple. We just grab some hostages and use them as bargaining chips with the family. Or maybe we can even take their identities. Pom Pom will get mad. No need for that. We'll return to the Express now. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. <laughs> You're on your own, sir. Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? <sighs> huh? As Donna's White Oak? But didn't you just say? Ha <laughs> Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of Asdonis White Oak just a moment ago. All right, no need for that then. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. <sighs> oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know, too many modifications and all. Anyway, let me check. Well, fork me. It says Donna's White Oak, all right. And there's a note. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. No mistake. That's her message to you. She knew the hotel. Yeah, was his PG, his PG so thirteen swearing is really funny place. to me. Well, looks like we took a detour, but. Now it's back to the Astral Express. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. You're back? Two guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill, so I told them to wait in the parlor car. Oh, just in time. Two guests? Yeah, or two. Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. I assumed you were already acquainted with the Garden. Given the chaotic situation in Penacone, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly trust right now. You are the Memo Keeper. Pleased to meet you, Dan Hung. I've seen you and others' memories. And as for Boot Hill, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. 
I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's white oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, Memo Keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. That's precisely what I intend to do. But before that, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Black Swan, and I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo keeper. As for Acheron's story, I'm sure she knows it better than I do. Greetings. I'm Acheron. What? You Garden of Recollection shirtbag! You betrayed me! <laughs> shirtbag? <laughs> I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. To be honest, it was more like stalking than helping. And the process was far from unnoticed, but we did escape. I asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals. Namely, all of you. Trustworthy? <laughs> Son of a nice lady! You think I'm dumb or something? How about this? I'll put a few bullet holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. Then, we can talk about trust. It doesn't have to be like that. I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. If my cover hadn't been blown, we might have had more time, but at the moment, we don't have any other options. No other options? What do you mean? This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. <sighs> is requesting as far as I can tell she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts Donna please rest assured your nameless companions are safe but they need our help as for boot Hill you may have guessed I've been waiting for you Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. To return his relics to their rightful owner. Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens, a sign of their mercy upon the world. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods, shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet. So, how long has this rain been going on for? I used to believe, just like you, that it would eventually stop. Years and decades passed. And in the end, such hope faded away before the rain did. Looks like the God you mentioned doesn't exist after all. Well, let me share a story with you. Mortals who walk the paths are like sailors in a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples 
last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the world. Those shadows on the ocean. Sin thirsters. The obsessions of the path strangers. They emerge from the depths of our lakes. Seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny. Unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms and the once my dear companions, a group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war. A crusade that shook the universe. The universe witnessed the fall of Zuro, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. Price so hefty that only those who were there still remember. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. So someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. They were heroes in their time. You shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of the nihility. As for me, I've suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin thirsters, they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? Well, some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. <sighs> I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm means off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if, and it's just an if, if this is what the departed ones expected, should we try to change it? A good question. And a profound one. I don't know the answer. What I do know is that one day, I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. Well, uh, there was a lot of... Uh backstory stuff on the part of uh, when I appeared Ekron. as a child my speech mindset and soul reflected immaturity and innocence 
As I grew into adulthood, I left behind my childlike side. I humbly request your blessings, esteemed advocate of Shibe. Come to me, my kinship. I have sought their presence with us. As you wish. I have faithfully served the Alfalfa family for nearly a decade, promoting the path of the Harmony to the best of my ability. However, I made a mistake yesterday. While I was preparing dinner for the family head, I accidentally dropped a prepared dish on the floor. Out of laziness, I lied and claimed that everything was ready. Although the head has dismissed me as punishment, it has been tough to sleep with the guilt still gnawing at me, as I worried that the seeds of evilness may have taken root in my soul. So, I confess to you now, to seek atonement for my sins. Do you sincerely repent, and vow to change your ways? <sighs> yes. Have you examined your soul, and confessed all your sins? Oh, yes. Are you willing to accept the process of atonement? <laughs> yes. Very well. Show your dedication and goodwill to the family, and you shall be reinstated among them. Now, please, leave in peace. Oh, pray, Shipe. And thank you. Esteemed advocate. Next. Please, step forward. I... I wholeheartedly confess to you. Please, pardon my sins. Rest assured. I have implored their presence to be with us. As long as you are sincere, absolution will be granted. Oh, oh, great. You know, I... I arrived in Panacone as a stowaway. I sold everything to get a ticket. My house, my land, and... my two children. I see. Okay, that's... Please, go on. That's, that's a bit much. My children were starving. And I hope they'd have a chance at survival if they became slaves here. If... if I can strike it rich here, I'll lift them out of that situation. And give them the life they deserve. Hmm. But the Bloodhound family got wind of it. They're on my tail, hunting me down. I thought I could bring my kids here. It, it was all my fault. All my fault. The family is ready to forgive all sinners. I'll ask the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. You don't need to live in fear anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll work my hardest to redeem my children and make them part of the family. Praise the Harmony! Next, please step forward. Hey! Long time no see, Mr. Sunday! The most esteemed individual in Pentecone, and the next leader of the Oak family, right? I have sought their presence with us. Let us proceed. Let's just get this over with. <clears throat> I have sinned. Please forgive me. I wasted half a pizza at breakfast and a bottle of Soul Glad. That's it. Nothing more. When we wrap this up, I've got a robo ball game to catch, you know? 
Do you seek to atone for your sins through good deeds? My sins? Wow, starting to sound like a saint, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Neither the family nor you have the right to judge me. You think nobody knows what your precious family has done? About the watchmaker? Huh? Don't kid yourself, Featherbrain. Those dream chasers might be fooled by your act, but don't fool yourself. Before you start spouting off your holy verses, answer me this. Where does the power of the Oak family come from? And your power? What makes you think you can sit there, all high and mighty, looking down on everyone else? Well, I've spent enough time in confession today to enter the Harmony's Paradise, right? Then I'll take my leave. Good luck with your election, and, uh, don't make me regret my investments in you. This is an interesting scene. Eh, yeah. Priest Sunday. Faced soul, hear my doubts. Who can judge the strong when their power hides their crimes? Who can vouch for the weak when they will pay any price to survive? Who can comfort the purest souls when even they get led astray? If the strong defending the weak is truly the foundation of paradise. Then who, who is responsible for the suffering and anguish in this wretched world? Brother? Brother? Brother, are you all right? Mm. I'm fine. I've been working long hours, and I just made a trip to Dreamflux Reef and back. So, I'm a bit out of sorts. But it'll all be over before we know it. Yeah, something's up with You've him, You've been right? working non-stop on the Germany Festival, Mr. Sunday, and no one could have predicted this incident. Even if the Stellaron does pose a grave threat, I still feel sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. <laughs> no need to worry about troubling anyone. The Charmony Festival was meant to spread joy and harmony across the cosmos. But now that we know the truth, I'm afraid we'll have to cancel it. It has always been our wish to make everyone happy, so... We'll do our best to explain everything to the Dream Master. I'm sure he'll understand. Even if the negotiation does not go smoothly... I'll refuse to go on stage. Without the Chordmaster, the Harmonious Choir would not arrive, and the Charmony Festival would be just a grand performance, and nothing more. <laughs> I'm relieved to see your determination. You know, since arriving in Penacone, we haven't had any contact with this Dream Master himself. I'd heard of the heads of the five major lineages, but the Dream Master is a mystery to me. Yeah, the fact that they keep dodging around the Dream this Master issue rarely grants an audience. I wonder, even for us. But given the urgency of the situation, he's agreed to meet us in person. <laughs> Perhaps he'll be the first guest to meet the Dream Master in years, Mr. Yang. Let's hope we can reach a consensus that satisfies everyone. The Stellaron is the Dream Master? Indeed. Let us hope I mean so. like, uh... It's about time. We'll have to get ready for the meeting. I apologize for any inconvenience Like the Bella Box the situation? Don't I can worry. see that. I'll be waiting here. All right, chat. <laughs> There's been a lot. Looks like someone needs help. Let's go check it out. There's been a lot of exposition so far today, but I think it's probably a good time to take a break. 
Uh, we will come back tomorrow to experience more. It's getting late. Where to now? We'll come back. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow to continue more story stuff. So, yep. I will see you guys soon. So, have a good one. <laughs>